Well, we want to welcome all of you back, and we have a visitor tonight, and did you want to share a bit, uh, or would you like to share on his behalf? Or? He coming for a second time. Second time. Oh, that's really yeah. Wonderful. Well, he, he has two questions, but I think maybe well, after... <clears throat> no, he, he can ask. No. Mm -hmm. The first question, uh, actually I didn't answer because I thought better ask here. Uh, he said, when, so we're learning about the uh, Bible together. Mm -hmm. So he said, when uh, uh, Shaitan Satan brought Jesus, that I will give you everything if you mm -hmm. follow me. Uh, he's saying, oh, Jesus is a Lord who came to help for us. Mm -hmm. And Satan knows that, of course. Why he is still trying to? Ask Jesus to follow him. Um, so this is the first question he asked. So <clears throat> is his question, why is Satan so stupid to ask the Son of God something yes. when he knows how powerful Jesus is? That's a good question. I'll just pass that on to Pastor Jim. Why was Satan so stupid to try and tempt the Son of God? Well, the only thing I can say, I, mean, I can think of two things. The first thing is that Satan is the father of lies. Okay? Jesus said he's a liar from the beginning. When he lies, he speaks his native language. Right? When you speak Farsi, you can speak fluently. Right? When she speaks Balinese, you can speak fluently. When you do Tagalog. Mm -hmm. When Satan lies, he's speaking his native language. And sometimes, someone who is a liar can also be on the other end of lies as well. He, he can lie to himself, possibly. But secondly, the question goes back to the very beginning. Why did Satan rebel against God to begin with? Because God is almighty. And Satan was originally an angel. So why would he rebel against God knowing that he cannot overcome God, well, Satan doesn't know everything, right? Only God knows everything. Maybe Satan somehow thinks that he can overturn God. But the reason, the reason that he tried to get Jesus to turn around in the wilderness is because he did not want Jesus to go to the cross. If Jesus goes to the cross, <coughs> all of Satan's plans are ruined. And um, so the devil tried to give him the kingdom without a cross. And in Matthew 28, what we read is that Jesus, having risen from the dead, says, Now I have all authority, not only on her, which Satan had promised him, but also in heaven. And um, those would be my three answers. A. Satan's a liar, a deceiver, maybe he deceives even himself. Secondly, the question is bigger than why did he try to tempt Jesus. The question is why in the first place did he rebel against God? We don't really know what he could think of. But this is what we call grandiosity, right? When somebody does that in real life, we may have a mental illness. So Satan is a kind of a spiritual mental illness to think that he's big enough to fight with God in the first place. And then thirdly, it was not the answer to his question, but was the answer to why would Satan want to tempt Jesus because his goal is to give Jesus the kingdom without a cross. And, but Jesus did not accept this. Your question is a good question because it brings up the fact that sometimes in the Bible when we have questions, there's direct answers, like we can find a verse um, that directly answers it. Sometimes we can't. So what, what, what we just heard from Pastor Jim is taking other teaching from the Bible and then making it um, helpful for answering the, the, the question as much as we can. 
Um, so <clears throat> when I heard your question, <clears throat> I asked myself the question, well, is there any direct Bible verse that could answer the question? And there's one that comes pretty close to it. So I'd like you all, everybody turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you want to read it from your Bible? Hebrews 4, 15. We'll follow along in our own translations, but we'll hear it in your Bible. Just read it out loud. Hebrews, Hebrews 4.15. Just one verse. Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here we go. Galatians. Hebrews. Hebrews. Yes. Well, I, I think it'd be good for him to. I got two Bibles for you, by the way, that I have to bring them next week. Two Parsi Bibles. Are Are you trying to find it? Yes. Okay. Count Count back from the last book of the New Testament. Okay, just f find the last. The New Testament's again. Yeah, yeah, the New Testament's the second half, but... but um, it's also the table of contents. Yeah. Mm. Hebrews is 12. towards the end. Okay. Yeah. It's towards the end. Keep on going, towards keep on going. Yeah, because he's reading like Persian and Hebrew. Yeah. 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 Ye
<clears throat> he was tempted. So uh, to answer your question, Jesus had to be tempted in all things, just as we were, in order that he might be the high priest to offer our prayers up to God and to be able to sympathize with us and to be able to understand us. So the temptation of Satan in the wilderness is an opportunity for Jesus to fully experience our humanity. Did, does that make sense? Yes. You want to translate? So Satan is operating under God's plan. You, you, you see? So there's, there's more than one way of looking at things. We can look at things from the level of human responsibility. You did something, you're responsible. That's the first level. If there's a second level under which everything happens, you did something, but God is in control. And that includes the good and the bad, the cross and the resurrection. <clears throat> so this is a mystery, how God can be in control and yet allow these bad things to happen. But uh, stories like the temptation of Jesus are functioning on those two levels. <clears throat> Jim, you wanted to add something? subject to God's will. Right, right. Yeah. He can only do what God allows him to do. <clears throat> so one of the places that we get this from is Job chapter 1. Uh, uh, Job, can you help him find Job 1 in, in his Bible because my eyes are so bad? The rest of you turn in your Bibles to Job uh, chapter 1 and 2. I want to show you how what we just said shows itself in Job. <clears throat> what Jim just said. <clears throat> J O B Job. Job. Old Testament chapter yes. one and two. Yep. Chapter one verse. Yeah, one chapter. Chapters one and chapters two. <clears throat> Job is just before Psalms. Where's Psalms? Chapter one? Yes. Well, First. chapter one, verse thirteen. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back to the dialogue. Well, they're looking, we're they're looking for the Psalms. For so just before the Psalms. Chapters, Psalms. The chapters, and we the book. Mm -hmm. Rita has a question. Okay. So, Yo. the Sassan yes. also Yo. part of the Yo. God's plan. Mm -hmm. And you know, Yo. to have Jesus experience this kind of experience to be mm -hmm. tempted by Satan. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, that means God is in control of the Satan also. Absolutely. And we're going to see that in Job 1. So uh, to turn, turn to Job 1. <clears throat> verse 6. 6 to 12. Job 1. Verses 6 to 12. And once everybody finds it, then we'll hear it read. Did you find it? Yeah. Uh, Job 1. Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 12. So we're going to look at six verses together. <clears throat> and these six verses are an exact uh, illustration of what Pastor Jim just said. <clears throat> so, you want to read that for us? Chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. 6 to 12. یک روز که فرشتگان در حضور خداوند حاضر شده بودند شیطان نیز همراه ایشان خداوند از شیطان پرسید کجا بود شیطان پاسخ داد دور زمین میگشتم و در آن سیر میکرد آنگاه خداوند از او پرسید آیا بنده من ایوب را دیده ای بر زمین کسی همچون او پیدا نمیشد 
او مردی گروسکار و خدا ترس و از گناه دوری میبرزید شیطان میگفت اگر خدا ترسی برای او سودی نمیداشت این کار را نمیکرد ایوب و خانواده خانواده ایوب و خانواده و انبالش را از هر گزندی محفوظ داشته ای در سنج او را برکت داده و ثروت زیاد او بخشیده ای داراییش را از او بگیر آنگاه خواهی دید آشکار آشکارا به تو کف خواهد بود خداوند در پاسخ به شیطان گفت برو و هر کاری که میخواهی با داراییش بکن فقط حاسی بیدون پس شیطان از بارگاه خداوند بیرون رفت Okay, so who's talking to whom in, in verses 6 and 7? Two people are talking. Satan is talking to God, and God asked Satan a question. What was the question? Where have you been going? And how did Satan answer? Go out. Went around the I've been roaming around the earth and walking around it. Same word. What? The same word is picked up by Peter in 1 Peter 5. When Peter says, um, <clears throat> be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But resist him, standing firm in faith. So... <clears throat> The whole idea of Satan running around the earth, prowling about, tempting us, comes from Job and what, what Peter said. So, <clears throat> so the question is, um, what in, verse, in verses 10 and 11, Satan asked God for permission to do something. What was that? In verses 10 and 11, Satan asked God and says, let me do this. What, what was the this? take away everything. Yeah. Let me get him. Let me prowl about him and get, get your servant, Job. Um, and you know what? If I do that, he's going to curse you. And, and so what does God do in verse 12? What happens in verse 12? So everything that he has is been... And not, that, not just life and death, but even the bad things. Right, the, the, the even devil, the bad things. The devil can only go as far as God allows him to go. And that's the point. And so that, that explains the answer to your question is Satan did this because God allowed him to tempt Jesus in that way because it was to allow Jesus to undergo the trials of being our high priest. that he might be that good savior that can save us in every way. 